I think we can get started. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so I'm from Australia. It's uh, was uh, such a long way to come here. So this is my first talk in such a conversation. So the first thing I would thank for Flock and thank for Red Hat for bringing me here. Um, so uh, over the next 30 minutes, you're going to hear about something that will change the way you are doing package updates in Fedora. So don't be scared. We're not making your heart, well, sorry, make, we are not going to make your life harder. Um, so my name is uh, Mai Jia, but don't get confused. I think it's showing my Chinese full name on, on vlog somewhere. So if you want to reach me, you can reach me by this email just uh, at the bottom. Yeah. So I'm working in Factory 2.0 team at Red Hat, and I used to be a bigger developer. Uh, I'm also a Python developer. <laughs> All right, so let's move on next. Um, this one. Yep. All right, so have you ever noticed the uh, automated test results in body before? So if you, some of you have been to Adam's talk about, I think it's working with automated test systems. So you, I think you would have already got some idea of how this automated testing system work. So I think the Fedora QA has done a great job running a lot of automated tests when you fire a new update in body. Uh, so this is a screenshot of the you know automated test tab uh, on the web UI in body, uh, where it shows the all the test results from results DB. So as shown in this picture, you know it just some test results uh, of a package update for JDBC. So how, how many of you have seen the test results in results DB before? Uh, okay, great, yeah. So you, you guys, I think most of you know how result, re, result DB work and works and what result DB is, right? But I, I think it would be good just to refresh your memory. You know, result DB is a simple service for recording the automated test results you know, generated by many different testing systems. So when we are talking about testing systems, we are talking about task join, open, QA or CI pipeline and you know many other uh, similar testing systems in Fedora. So you, as you can see, we have got you know many test results here, passing which is you know which is cool, right? But we also have two field test results here. So do we actually re really care about these fielding test results? I think the answer is we do need to care, right? So what can we do with these fielding test results? Can we use them to help us enforce our package update quality? So let, let's find out today. So today I'm going to introduce two new services we are working on. The first one is called GreenWave, the other one is called WeaverDB. So what GreenWave is? GreenWave, you know, originally is known as policy engine, you know, in Fedora. So it's recently renamed to Greenway because we want to, you know, make it clear that Greenway is not driving any of the processes, and is not storing and applying any arbitrary policies about anything. So the fact is, Greenway is a service just for making business decisions or answering yes or no questions. Um, it's about you know other facts, so such as RPMs, modules, containers. So it can be used. Uh, at 13 gating points uh, in our release pipeline. So when we say gating points, uh, we're talking about body of internal tools like uh, Erata2. So the decision actually are based on test results in results DB, you know, according to some policies. So those, you know, these policies are just about what checks need to pass before an artifact is considered, you know, as good enough. So why, why do we need Greenway? What problems can GreenWave help us to solve in body? So I think right now we have identified two problems in body. Um, the first one is we, we, we don't enforce any checks across all the packages in body. So what, what that means, if you want, you can release your package update regardless of any field test results, right? So however, you know, if there's a test field which could be a that your package update is broken, 
and you could you know end up breaking other people's packages, uh, which is not what you are expecting. So to solve this problem, um, we as you know federal community want to enforce certain checks across all the distributions. So we want to you know get package uh, package updates based on the test results in. So when an uh, update is going to be released in body, so the goal here is just to prevent the broken changes that would affect other packages as well as you know improve package quality. So what checks do we want to enforce? So here is uh, just a uh, three big you know checks we we really want to uh, enforce right now. So this dot API check, you know this dot RPM Dublin, and uh, this dot upgrade pass. Um, you know, basically, TaskPron is running these three checks for, for you know, most of package updates. You know, because you know, I think um, just uh, Pingu just you know has reached the one issue for Greenwell just a couple days ago. Uh, I we just realized that actually <laughs> uh, this API check is uh, I think it's only uh, applied on uh, critical pass packages, right? No, it's well, it's. Restricted for the moment, but there is a there is a blacklist of packets that are not allowed. All oh, right, right, right. To be yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the next one, I think the upgrade path has some issues with the. Uh, uh, I think on, it's only run when package is pushing. Package to me, yeah. For is pushing to testing. Right, right, right. So depending on the getting points, only one or two of these three can be actually applied. Right, right. So, but eventually we want to enforce these checks for all the packages. Yeah, question. Uh, one of the things that allows people to. Uh, Accept such enforcement is the ability to then affect the results. For each of these three, can the packager affect you know, whether they're how ABI check runs against their package, how RPM deficit runs against their package, how upgrade pass runs against their package? I can answer that one. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> uh, the basic answer is no, they cannot, because these are not packaging or uh, functionality issues, tests, they are policy decisions. So if you want to, the ABI checks here, it prevents someone from breaking the ABI on a, on a stable federal rate. And that's something which federal ABI policy does not want to support. So if there is a bug in ABI check, the, the next service that uh, Matt is going to introduce allows you to waive that constraint. Mm -hmm. But it's a policy decision and that will have to be a relaunch action to actually lift that uh, specific and same thing for a grade pass. You need to you need to uh, keep the grade pass always compatible between uh, Fedora and one plus one, Fedora plus two. And that's a policy decision. So as a packager, yeah, you can you can influence that by not you know not creating a bigger update for Fedora minus two versus Fedora plus right. one. So you can go and fix your package. What about the RPM depth? Uh, that's why I want to let you know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the exact same thing. If if you get a failure, you fix the package. Fix right. the package first. Yeah. And uh, upgrade part path means NVR or it's NVR uh, between Fedora say twenty four twenty five yeah. twenty six or higher. And you plan to have something like uh, migration from Fedora twenty six to Fedora twenty seven, like basic check okay with the basic set of the packages. Are the, the is this the uh, workstation for example upgradable? Do you plan to cover it? I know they do have a system upgrade via DNS. It's more about the package version not being good. It, it is. It is. I mean, it's it's less. It's arguably less imperative than it was before, but I think it's still important. Um, what it's trying to prevent is having a one version earlier release because then at upgrade you end up not getting the new version kind of you end up with more, and then you can end up in weird situations. So what that is looking for is to make sure that if you were to upgrade from that there are no newer um, packages in 26 than there are in 27. That the very least the NVR minus the disk tag knows of the very least the old ones. As I recall, DNF had because that, I mean it's it's still it's still important. It's arguably not as imperative as it was because you know the the system upgrade was a little bit smarter than some of the things we've done in the past. But that's what Okay. More question? Yeah. If I may. So, and for each of the checks that you're enforcing, mm -hmm. am I as a packager able to run these without run each of these checks against my package during development or packaging without going through 
is also to be a burden so that I can no. actively fix it. Question. Oh, yeah, I think you answered yes with some difficulty, right? <laughs> document those steps. Mm -hmm. so yeah, okay. If that removes the idea that, honest oh, someone's <coughs> telling me what to do, but it's really helping me. To be honest, Seth, we've been running these for four years now. You were the first church to ask. Yeah, I've seen them going So now they're going to be forced. So that's yeah, good. Be cool. yeah. And this is part of the ingredients of making it work. I forgot the chance. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, if I so these uh, tests are uh, used just just for a uh, for a compo uh, composed ac acceptance testing, not for, uh, so it's not uh, really in, um, focusing on uh, some package, but more or less for a uh, whole compose. Or that's that's true or not? I think that's not true. It's just the uh, test task task running for each package out there. Yeah, but, uh, but is it that uh, uh, it will be updated in an uh, update system or or, or, or it use all, all the older version and just uh, use this uh, one build inside some stable system? I think you, you know, in body for each package update there, you know, it, it has a list of builds, right? So I think basically TouchStrong is running some tests on against these builds. So that's what the test results look, look uh, you know, the test results look like in, in body is actually just something like that. Okay? Right, yeah. I just wanted to clarify my answer to Seth before. Sure. Um, yes, Amazon RPM definitely locally. I'm not sure there's a point. Because RPM definitely itself is a check on the repository, not on the package. Just because the output comes out as, yes, your, your package is involved in dependency problems. Um, I mean, you can run it before you push it, but not necessarily be, you may not have necessarily caused it, but I'm very much of the opinion that if your package is involved in a dependency problem, that needs to be sorted out, but that problem can't get pushed. And there's no good way that I know of to figure out automatically who caused it. The easiest thing to do is just don't push anything in there. So some of those, yes, you can run them, but when you start getting into the repo level checks, um, that you know there's a there's a certain amount of where you run them, when you run them, that is inherent in the type of check base. It's a general principle that we should apply when we push it when we enforce and, and make enforce checks and get tests be gating and so mm. on to have them be reproducible. Right. Mm -hmm. But by definition, you this one is hard. Yeah. I mean, in general, I agree with you. And that, that was not terrible on this guy. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Anyway, so, yeah, I want to go back to, to my talk anyway. So, you guys can discuss later. <laughs> right. No, thank you for stopping me. <laughs> right, so, um, oh, all right, so, where are we? <laughs> okay, so, so the reason we want to enforce, you know, these checks, you know, we, we think these checks are considered extremely, you know, important by the distributions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these failures on a package update, I, I, I would say we almost, you know, certainly break applications or libraries that depend on this sub, you know, package that update. So uh, this failure should be, I think this failure, we think this failure should be, you know, inspected carefully by the package maintainer or, you know, other failure QA. So having these checks could help us solve the, you know, find the problem earlier in our release pipeline. So in great way, these checks, you know, could be expressed as a list of rules in, in a policy for different products. So the second problem is, you know, actually body has a feature to allow packagers to specify actual required checks, you know, but you know, people are not quite aware of, I don't think anyone uses it because it's a manual process, you know, it's not big fun. The reason, reason is you have to specify your extra checks in every you know, package update. So GreenWave can automate this process by allowing packagers to define policies what extra checks need to pass before package update is considered as good. So as a consequence, you know, GreenWave will automatic, automatically apply the, those policies when making decisions. So why, why do we need a new service? You know, why not just define policies in body itself? So, you know, body sounds like a perfect place for defining policies as it's, you know, it's already a 
gating system that you know packagers are used to know. So the reason is, uh, body is not the only place we want to introduce gating based on the test results. We we also want to you know reuse the same logic to perform gating as much as possible in other uh, you know gating points. So other gating points don't need to reinvent the wheel. So this will make our, our life easier to maintain you know, this such logic in one place rather than many places. So I think this, we think that's why it does make sense to you know, put Graven into a microservice along with other you know, microservices we have developed in factory two product. So in terms of the fielding test results, so what happens you know, when a test goes bad so what happens when, when a machine is wrong? So, so if a test fails, it could be because of if infrastructure problems or other known issues. So you know, as a packager, you may want to wait, wait right? So to move your package update forward. So since the results in results DB are immutable and cannot be changed by humans, so we just need a new service, which is WaverDB, to allow humans to override the, the test results. So in a short summary, WaverDB is just a microservice for storing waivers against the test results in results DB. So generalize the existing waving functionalities that we have in some of the testing testing tools like uh, RPM Grill. So just as the same as results DB, WaverDB is a central place for storing all the waivers. All right, so put all you know thing, all these three services together. So when a package update is going to be, uh, let's say, pushed to up a stable in body, so body will ask Groovy to make a decision whether the package update is go, is okay to go, uh, and then Groovy will query both results DB and waiver DB and look at the results and waivers together to make the decision. So Young has given a great talk about FreshMaker, but I just want, you know, how many of you have been to Young's talk? I think most of you. Okay, that's good, but just to, I think just to refresh your memory, right? So, so it's just a service for automatically rebuilding artifacts when their dependencies get updated. So it can, you know, for example, it can keep your container fresh when RPMs are released to stable. So in, Another example, when you update the spec fare in your RPM package, FreshMaker will automatically trigger the rebuilds of all the uh, modules and you know, containers that contain that you know, RPM package. So it will save you a lot of time and effort to rebuild all of the things by yourself, so w which is really nice. So, uh, but at the moment, FreshMaker is unconditionally trigger the rebuilds all the time. So, but uh, in some situations, the rebuilds are not necessarily needed, right? So, for example, if an underlying artifact is released, but not but didn't pass certain checks, which may be a sign that the underlying artifact is somehow broken, right? So, FreshMaker you know, <coughs> should not trigger the rebuilds of all the upstream artifacts. Uh, instead, it should wait until you know the underlying artifact got fixed first. So, we think to make FreshMaker more efficient as well as in false, in false quality, Groovy can be used here to gauge the rebuild, so based on the test results, and to decide when to rebuild, and you know, how much to rebuild. The next topic is gonna be hard, because I'm going to talk about the implement, <laughs> sorry, implementation details. <laughs> and so basically just about, talk about how Groovy works under the hood, and where are we at today with the current implementation. Um, so, I think Grunway and uh, WaverDB are implemented by Flask, you know. So how many of you know Flask? Wow, that's great. <laughs> so Flask is just, you know, it's a micro framework for Python, you know. It's well documented and easy to code. Um, so first, let's talk about how to define a Grunway policy. Uh, because it plays such an important role in Grunway, a policy is just a place where we uh, packagers could specify extra checks, so each policy 
can have ID product version decision contact rules. So ID just no more than you know unique identifier. Product version just uh, uh, PDC. I think it's called yeah. Right, it's a PDC identifier such as Fedora 26, Fedora dash 27. Uh, decision context uh, is a label named through coordination between policy author and consuming tools. So uh, you know a list of rules just about what ha what types are required to be passing. So with the current implementation, policies are e expressed in YAML configuration files deployed with the application. But this may most likely change in the future because, uh, you know, ultimate, ultimately we want the policies enforced by Groovy to be self-service. So you know, people can just come on board and define the policy for, for themselves. All right. So let's imagine that we're going to push a package package update to stable for GIPC in body, and we have got one. Filling test results in result DB, which is required by the policy I mentioned before. Uh, if we ask Greenwell to make a decision, it's gonna tell us the policy is not satis satisfied yet, right? And uh, it will say which test is filled because we have that uh, installed API tag field. So uh, if you think the filling test is false positive, uh, you can you know create a waiver by calling waiver DB API. Um, you know, but the things you, you in the post request you need result ID and product version and uh, you know good reason. So you know other people can know who and why this filling test result was with. So having said that, but we're not expecting people to call this API directly. So you know, make picturing that people will be able to wave the filling test result from the body web UI. Uh, this is still kind of thing we are currently working on. <laughs> Yep, yep. Unfortunately, we don't have that, but we are considering this, right? Yeah. So we, 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 we go in, I think we, um, we're talking about that, we're going to introduce an auto weaving series or something like that. But, yeah, yeah, Rob? I was thinking, wouldn't one say it over? Because it might be that the first one failed because of an infrastructure change, so you want to wave it. And then the next rerun, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a real problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. my last slide. So the next step, just body integration, I think we have almost uh, completed and you know we have been putting putting a lot of effort. So thank you for body team. <laughs> so I um, it's quite exciting to say that because it has been deployed since last Friday, but I think we just have some small issues, you know, before turning on turning it on. Uh, but you will see that you know on production virus one. And next one is uh, message bus driven so Basically, we, we would like to use find message to automatically drive all the process. And lastly, we want to allow packagers to define a policy uh, for each package. So, okay, I think that's really what I want to represent today. So if we want to get involved and if we want to contribute, here the are the links. Welcome to any patron. Thank you. Yeah, question. Um, have you considered putting the policy in package itself? Is that some, something we're talking about together later? Yeah, yeah, sure. Or is it, yeah, all right. Yeah. I'd like to talk to you. See what we can do there. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if it's, I'm actually kind of wondering if it makes sense to load per package policies in a way that if we are pushing on one side to have tests in this case, which are entirely in the hand of the packagers, so they're gonna really decide which tests are being run. And then we have distrollable checks being made by TaskCraft and enforced by Greenway, then I wonder if, you know, what the packager, what the packager needs to control are the tests that he already has control over, 
and what the distro wants to control are what the distro ODS controller, which is being read and what it is. So we may be able to just simplify things here by just saying that Greenwave and Weber, well, Greenwave, Weber, Greenwave's policies are distro level decisions mm -hmm. which are controlled by infra and red and basically based on decision with Pesco and everyone with Pesco and the TNT community. And everything which is package level is based on the, the tests which are present in this list. Yeah, that, does, right. that, does in, that does imply that this SAIT CI pipeline is open to more than just the subset of packages. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. So <coughs> we're, we're, we're talking about this in terms of distro level checks because that's what is in um, authority right now, but Greenwave is not limited to that, right? So we could, I mean, it, it can gate on anything that's available in Wave be, or in which Result PD, which will at some point basically be everything. So which I think we'd like to do test results at a more granular level and, and gate on those. So you mean test results on more granular level? Like, so it doesn't have to just be tests that are defined by rel and right? I mean, yeah. in fact, you could say, I want to make sure that this command returns the right thing. Yeah, and that's, that's defined somewhere and then gate on that. That's what basically the future update does. That's what basically the Atomic CI pipeline is allowing to do. The test time these days, they are well directed by the CI pipeline. So that means that the Atomic CI pipeline may use the Atomic part in front of it and become the CI pipeline. It complements the test. I, I think we can discuss this later, right? So yeah, basically, I'm running out of time. So. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs>